Hi, my name's Christina Davis. I'm uh, one of Paul and Shirley Davis's children, number seven, lucky seven. And I wanted to interview my dad to go over um, his history. So we have that. So we'll start off with what's your full name, including my, any nicknames you have or may have had in the past. Uh, my uh, full name is Paul Thomas Davis. Uh, Paul uh, comes from uh, my mother, on my mother's side, she had a, 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 a uncle that was a, a priest. And uh, Thomas, I don't know where it comes from, but I know that uh, in the uh, three brothers, um, that uh, the two brothers that I have in our family, both have the nickname, I believe, Thomas. So there's some connection, I don't know what it is, but uh, somehow we'll, we'll uh, find that out. And uh, I, and when I grew up, I had no nicknames uh, uh, as a child that I know okay. of. Um, what is your birth date, marriage date, and locations of each? I was born uh, uh, June 14th, 1931. And it was a small uh, town in uh, northern Ontario. It's about uh, 300, uh, 300 miles northwest of Toronto. And uh, later on, uh, hopefully in our history, I'll give you more description of this town and what brought my uh, parents, uncles, and grandmother to that area. So that was your birth date. What's and the I'll, marriage date? I was married in uh, 19, uh, uh, December 31st in 1964 in uh, Danbury, Connecticut, and uh, to uh, Shirley uh, Ann Bayard. And uh, we'll get more into that as we move along our family history. What about your parents' names and their grandparents' names, well, if the, you know it? Oh, my father's name was Peter, and I, I don't think he had a middle name. I, I, I don't know why. I don't know where it is. is that? Mother was uh, Nabiha, N-A-B-I-H-A. -A. Uh, that is an Arabic name. Uh, Father was born in uh, Lebanon in the uh, uh, villages up there called uh, Arbat Ashaya. And mother was born in Damascus, in the walled city of uh, Damascus. Uh, I, they were, uh, father came uh, to northern Ontario following the footsteps of his uh, uh, mother and uh, grandfather. No, pardon me, uh, uncles. And uh, mother had a brother in Detroit, and uh, father uh, was um, went to the local church, and they uh, uh, arranged the meeting. And uh, apparently, uh, that's the way the tradition is. So uh, that's how they met and married in Detroit. So it was an arranged marriage. Well, I can't use the word arranged because he met her. Oh. All right. So uh, he met her, and uh, uh, and they connected. They they oh. uh, they. Uh, I don't know if they fell in love at that instant, but they uh, saw good in each other. Do you remember what your mother's maiden name was? Sukkar. Uh, S O U C K A R, or they use some spell it S O O K R. Uh, the literal translation of that is uh, sugar in uh, oh, neat. in English. So for, it's an Arabic. It's an Arabic name, yes. Right. Sukkah. Now, um, your grandparents' names, do you remember? No. My grandmother is the only one I know of the grandparents. Um, her name was Melanie. Uh, M M E L A N E Y, and uh, I don't know her middle her middle name, and uh, Tanus was her I believe her uh, maiden name. Um, now we talked about this earlier: the birth dates, marriage dates, and locations um, for parents. I you know. I don't have any of that information. Okay. I could do more research and try to 
get it up and uh, maybe before we finish the tapes okay. we can uh, put those into the uh, program. So can you explain what it was like in the time period that you grew up, you grew up in? Well it was uh, very difficult. Uh, war had a uh, great impact uh, on our community. It's a mining community and uh, the uh, mines uh, produced a lot of uh, nickel and copper and that kept the community going and they ran uh, three shifts and kept it uh, uh, very active. The nickel was used uh, mostly in the uh, aircraft. Uh, uh, it's an alloy that was used uh, uh, in the production of the uh, strength for the metal on airplanes. And, uh, you know, copper is used all over for wiring. Um, the uh, Canada entered the war, um, I think, a, a year or two before the United States, and um, Canada uh, uh, had a strong allegiance to England, and many of the uh, soldiers uh, in our village uh, uh, died. And it was quite a, a suffering to see the uh, parents uh, and the children uh, go through this uh, experience. Uh, and many of the shop owners had sons uh, in the military, and it was uh, pretty traumatic. The, uh, you know, and they raised uh, money for uh, bonds, and uh, I remember every week they would have a big, uh, uh, look like a mercury, uh, showing how high the uh, values of war bonds were sold to raise money for the war. And at that time they would have uh, some kind of weapon that would shoot off and we would hear it through the village. And that was a f way of encouraging to raise money. We would pick up uh, the, uh, the, well they used lead tin foil for cigarettes in those days. And lead was very important, so we'd roll it up. And they would roll, uh, they had uh, everything that we could salvage was uh, brought to the uh, uh, community to uh, help in the efforts of the war. So it, uh, it's a different way of life than you would compare today. The, all the, the uh, items, the food item, items were restricted, clothes items, gasoline, oil, all of these items were on short supply, shoes. So you, when you live in this kind of condition, it's a, a different way of life than you see of the freedom that you have today to buy any, any items that you, that you would want. So, uh, just, you know, the, uh, although we did, had plenty of uh, vegetables because that was grown on the soil, uh, fruit was uh, plenty. So those items were good and uh, a lot of people can, preserved, did everything they could to make sure that they had sufficient uh, uh, food for the winter months. And another point in uh, the area we lived in, the climate was uh, very extreme. The winters were very cold, uh, not like it is today, the way they have it. Uh, the, I understand some days they get in the summer uh, 90 degrees. We never saw that kind of temperature in the uh, Sudbury. The, uh, I remember one summer, we couldn't even go down to the lake. It was so cold the whole summer. Wow. So, you know, it's, it's a different, was a different way. So uh, we can go to the next question, if you like. What, what was the oldest uh, memory you know of when you were a child? Well, most of it is uh, the, uh, the war uh, left a big impact uh, on me. And I remember uh, uh, VJ Day, Victory Day, in, uh, in uh, the village. Uh, the, uh, the town went pretty wild. They, uh, everybody went downtown and uh, the looters got organized, broke into the liquor store and the wine store and, and celebrated. And uh, uh, I remember my parents uh, letting me to go down into the downtown area to experience that with my sisters. So I, I remember that very well. That was uh, a big, um, big relief. What about when you were even younger? Do you remember the first, when you were a child, what's the first, oldest memory you, you can remember? I, <laughs> mom, mom told me that you remember when you were a child looking. Over the tabletop. 
yeah. over the table. For top. some reason that left, a, I don't know why, but I remember when my eyes could reach the top of the tabletop and I could look over and see it. Now, I don't remember the height of that yeah. table, but uh, that to me was a big, uh, big accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And I also need to tell you that I had a twin sister, Pauline. So, you know, that was my buddy. That was my, uh, uh, there's a, another word for it. She's oh, my, oh, my twin and my womb partner. <laughs> so so that, that, I do, that I do remember. So you guys well. got along well when Very you were well, yes. younger. Very well, yes. And where did you grow up again? Where in Canada? In, in uh, um, a town called uh, Sudbury. That's uh, north of uh, Toronto and north of North Bay. Uh, and what made that whole town was the uh, mining, uh, the um, underground mining. And it still exists today and very, uh, very successful. It's called INCO, I-N-C-O. Uh, and it, uh, it's uh, a big, uh, big operation. So did your family move a lot, <clears throat> or did they stay in one house pretty much the whole time? In All I remember is one house, 196 Elm Street. And, and when you moved, it. when you moved to um, out of Canada, how old were you? I oh, just finished the eighth grade, and now that would be about um, let's see, uh, 31. We left in 47, so that would be close to 15. Uh, Senior uh, eighth grade. What age would that be? Probably, Probably a freshman. Yeah, so thirteen. No more than that, huh? Fourteen. Let's see. If it was eighth grade, you were probably thirteen. Well, no. It'd be fifteen. I, th think so? I think that's a little older. But oh, you were eight, in eighth grade. You eighth, I just graduated eighth grade. Okay. Um, and where's the first place you moved to from Canada? Well, the only place we moved to. And the first time we ever left the village was uh, from Sudbury to Phoenix, Arizona. And you drove? And father bought uh, two cars in Detroit right after the war because cars were hard to buy. So we got it in, in the United States. And uh, we had two cars. Uh, uh, Uncle Joe drove the other one and father drove uh, the one of them. And we motorcade all the way down to Phoenix, Arizona. Did you take a lot of stops in between and do scenic oh, we, things, we or stop, did you drive directly? No, uh, we stopped every night in a, a place, and uh, Mother uh, would make lunches and breakfast, and uh, we had a good time. It was a beautiful time, and watch how the, the uh, climate changed from, uh, we left in, uh, uh, seemed to me, about late September, and I, by the way, I have a diary that's written someplace. I kept a log of mileage and time and oh, places yeah. we stopped at. Uh, we drove all the way from, uh, first stop was Toronto, and Dad had relatives in there. We stopped at their place, and uh, a lot of them were saying their farewells to the family. Um, then uh, the next stop was Detroit, and then we just kept working our way down till we got to Phoenix, Arizona. So why did they pick Phoenix? Father, uh, uh, two years before that, made uh, uh, two trips uh, to see what location would be best for his health. He had bronchitis very bad, and the northern climate of Ontario was very, in, very, uh, very hard on his health. So um, he went to uh, uh, Texas, uh, California, and uh, Arizona, and he found that Arizona was uh, best suited for his climate. Then... Um, uh what kind of house did you live in when you were a child? It was a, um, it was a two-story house, and we, I remember we rented the upstairs, and then at, later on, Dad uh, uh, expanded the house to put more bedrooms for uh, the uh, seven of us. Uh, and that's, uh, I, I remember that uh, being built, and uh, uh, that was a very, very interesting. That gave us so much more room in the house. Um, and uh, that, uh, that uh, the, uh, the boys had one room, the girls had another. Uh, so that was, that was great. Now, um, did your parents, were they born in Canada or where were they born? No, both of them were born in uh, the Middle East. 
dad in Lebanon and mother in Syria. Okay. Um, do you know how they got to Canada? Yes, uh, the, by boat. Both uh, came over by boat uh, through uh, Detroit. No, pardon me. I don't know the port of entry. My, I'm going to guess in New York. Uh, that's my guess. Huh. Both came through New York. And uh, they, uh, you know, what happens, one of the relatives tells them exactly how to get to that location, the village where they're at, or the city where they're at. And uh, uh, first stop was Detroit for mother, and uh, for father it was uh, in uh, Toronto. Um. So who are all your siblings? Well, there was uh, uh, there was seven of us. There was uh, Helen, Genevieve, Joe, uh, Nora, uh, Johnny, uh, uh, Pauline, and myself. Now, did I miss anybody? I don't think so. <laughs> and were there any family friends that you guys were really you were really fond of or got along with? Yeah, no, in, back in uh, Canada, there were a lot of friends. Uh, one of the biggest things for entertainment while there, well, a lot of people just, we just, you get together and you sit down and visit. Uh, and, you know, my uh, older brothers and sisters uh, had a uh, lot of friends and uh, we, we chummed around, uh, they, they took us under their wings and we chummed with them. Not that we didn't have any friends, but they were older and they, you wanted to, uh, um, you know, use their protection and uh, their uh, influence and that's how we uh, a lot of the socials there was a uh, a club uh, at the church at uh, St. Louis, St. Louis de Gonzague they had a, uh, uh, a social program there and a lot of the brothers and sisters went there and uh, we would uh, we would tag along and watch them when they didn't want us they'd send us home I know you, you mentioned to me before that you, we were listening to a Johnny Cash CD and you said, I think it was you, you said that you remember looking in the windows, everybody yeah. dancing well, to Johnny Cash. It wasn't to Johnny Cash in those days, oh. but it was a similar uh, beat of music. And uh, this was on our house on Elm Street. Uh, the, um, the older uh, uh, siblings were having a party in our uh, 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 dining room, and they were dancing, but they didn't want us around the kids, <laughs> so we 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 were shuffled away. But uh, so we made sure we left the blind open enough from the bottom <laughs> that uh, that we could see what was going on. So we'd sneak outside until somebody spotted us and lowered the blind. So, uh, but we got a good view of how dancing works and how older people act. Now, was there a chore that you had? Did you guys all have different chores? Yes, we did. Because of the uh, weather, um, you know, uh, the heat was generated through a coal furnace. And the coal produced uh, ash, and that had to be discarded. We had to get rid of it. So all of us had a, uh, a job of putting this ash after it cools down into buckets and uh, taking it outside and spreading it. So that, that same ash could be used for uh, uh, on top of the uh, ice so you don't skid. Uh, most of it was just dumped out in the, uh, in the alley. So you have to make a, uh, you have to make a trail. You've got to move the snow away and uh, walk towards the uh, area where you want to uh, uh, get rid of it. And then the coal was uh, stored in, a, uh, uh, in the basement in a section, and that, uh, and that was shoveled into the furnace. So that's, that's hard. And then on um, then the hot water, uh, that was for the heating. Then hot water had a separate, uh, they call that a jacket furnace. It's a small little furnace, and that it was uh, with wood. And every time you wanted hot water, and when you want hot water, you would heat the, uh, put the wood and burn it in there. So that isn't done every day. Most of the hot water was done off of the kitchen stove with a kettle. Wow. 
Now, were there any that you just really didn't like doing any chores? Well, you know, as kids, you don't like any chores. <laughs> so, but we had to shovel the snow in order for us to get out of the house. You know, if snow come in at night, uh, uh, you'll get uh, two, three, four feet. The snow was so high that the top of the porch, it would reach the top of the porch. We would flip over the rail and just land in the snow. Um, what do you think, since you were a child, has been the most uh, prominent or important invention? Yeah, so know. what invention occurred during your lifetime that you think it was most valuable? Well, you know, we, uh, you know cars are already uh, invented at that time, uh, but we had still had a lot of horse-drawn uh, uh, delivery of milk, bread, uh, you know, th those were the things that, uh, that existed. And when you went to the grocery store, you stood at a counter. And you, the, 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 on the other side, the uh, clerk, he would go get the items for you. Uh, you know, you asked for butter, he'd run and get it and put it in front of you. And mm -hmm. so just think of that process, how slow that is compared to what we do today. Uh, that's a big innovation in itself. You know, I'm sure cars have improved, uh, airplanes have got, uh, uh, you know, airplane is the, the mode of travel. Uh, in those days it was train, train or bus. Not airplane. No, no, air was very too expensive. And, and uh, telephone calls were very expensive long distance. You, you just wrote letters. And, 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 tel and telegram was, uh, you know, uh, telegram was very popular. Was that expensive too? No, it was uh, cheaper than telephone. Wow. What kinds of books did you like to read when you were younger? Oh, yeah, I like Gulliver Travel. I remember that. Uh, that was a, a, a good book. Uh, we went to a, um, a French school, all of us, and uh, most of our books were uh, in uh, French. I uh, wasn't an avid reader. But uh, I do remember Gulliver Travel, and we read a lot of poems. Do you ever remember not having enough food because the times were bad? No, I don't. I don't ever remember that. So I remember always... eating a lot of bologna. That was a uh, see. You know, a lot of the meat products were very, very difficult to get. But for some reason, bologna was very inexpensive, and uh, it. Uh, it was uh, uh, plentiful at our house. Now, do you still like bologna? Yeah, or I still, I still love bologna? it. Yeah. <laughs> I love bologna. <laughs> and it has the same flavor. I don't know why. Um, did you have any favorite toys when you were younger? Boy, toys were very hard to come by, here, Christina. They just, I mean, that to get a toy, you were, you're lucky, you know, to get a, they were made out of metal and uh, not, not as refined like it is today. If they would ever break, you know, there was always a chance of getting scratched because of the, the metal mm -hmm. in itself. But yes, there were, but uh, uh, in our household, there weren't many, many toys. A lot of it was uh, handmade, you know, we made, uh, um, we made a lot of things out of wood to play with. And I remember making a skateboard, and that, that worked very good. Uh, so and you just, you know, salvaged whatever you can, right. and you just make them work. Um, what were the schools like? You said you went to a French school, and then explain how you got there, too. Well, uh, the choice was either go to an English or French school. My father thought that would be a very good idea for all of the kids to have a second language, and especially that we're living in Canada, and the community that we lived in was uh, half French and half English. Uh, Although the English uh, were very strong and uh, uh, they um, looked at us, uh, the French people, as, uh, you know, uh, just as, in a way, the way the whites looked at the blacks at one time. That's the way the uh, English people were. The, you, uh, you had to really prove yourself uh, as a Frenchman. We didn't experience that because we, were, we weren't considered neither English nor French. So uh, we, have, we had, a, a, I think, an upper hand 
and the fact that, uh, that we were that way, but I felt very bad for the French people and the struggle that they had to prove themselves in, a, in, in the community. And how do you get to school? Did you walk? Or? Well, everything over there was walk. You know, you, you, very hard. You know, when the snow was uh, heavy, you had to walk where the, where all the roads that were open, the sidewalks that were open. And, uh, but you get there, you know, you hit all the uh, snow plows and the crews work all night just to clear the roads and sidewalks. Uh, yeah, we, we, it, it was difficult. We, uh, we got there. You now, make your way and you have to wear clothes that is appropriate to that weather. And uh, mother spent hours just getting us bundled up mm -hmm. in the galoshes and everything. And, and then you get to school, you got to take those off and uh, put them back on when you go home. Um, do you remember any, what was your favorite class in school? Uh, well, we had uh, uh, one teacher that taught all the subjects. Oh. And I had, uh, uh, in the eighth grade, I had uh, uh, two teachers. One that went from the first grade to the sixth grade. And from the sixth to the eighth, we had uh, 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 Maurice Carvel. He, uh, he taught us 6th, 7th, and 8th. And Madame La Ronde was from 1st first, first grade to 6th grade. And uh, she lived near our house uh, just off of uh, Elm Street. And I would watch to see when she was coming by to go to school. And I would catch <laughs> up to her and talk to her, try to shine things up. So, uh, she was very good to our family. Mm. Very nice. Just. How big were your class? Were the classes? They were big. We oh I I uh, my, my guess that we had, uh, you know, thirty or forty in each class. Hmm. Now, was there any special spot you and your friends would hang out or siblings hang out at? Well, we uh, I I remember uh, I befriended a couple of the kids in grade school, and. Uh, one of the fun things that we used to do is, uh, in the winter months, go sit down and watch the northern lights. And uh, that was very, uh, you know, that, that was exciting to us, just to see how the lights, uh, how the formation of the northern lights would change on a continual basis. Mm -hmm. And the colors, very impressive. We, we got uh, a good view of that. And then to watch the, uh, you know, run into the snow and, jump in it and toboggan rides down the hills, uh, ice skating. Those were fun things as kids. Um, were you ever given any special awards for um, your studies or activities at school? Uh, I, don't, I don't remember any. And then how many years of education have you completed? Well, eight years out of uh, high school, pardon, eight years out of grade school in Canada, and then four years out of uh, high school in Phoenix, and then four years out of college. And where'd you go to high school in Phoenix? And uh, we went to, when we first moved down, I was a freshman at St. Mary's High School, and went there four years. And at that time, uh, St. Mary's uh, Boys was on uh, third, oh boy, I think um, that would be uh, Third Street and uh, Fillmore. Well, Polk Street, Third Street and Polk Street. That's where it was. And that was the boys' division. And the girls' uh, division uh, school was right across, just directly south of uh, St. Mary's uh, uh, Basilica, which is where the uh, convention center is today. And both of those properties have been bought by the uh, city. And uh, the uh, uh, St. Mary's moved uh, further north to... Uh, Sheridan and uh, Third Street, where uh, the boys and the girls are all in one uh, uh, high school. Now, you said you were there freshman year? Freshman, mm -hmm. yes. And then what about the rest of high school? Well, the, 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 I went there four years, all of them at St. Mary's. Okay. And I was uh, active in the, uh, in the band, the marching band. What and instrument did you play? I played a saxophone. And um, did you play any sports? Uh, no. I, I worked after school. I couldn't play sports. Where'd you work? Well, I helped with uh, the family uh, 
a business, and uh, we, Dad bought a motel on Van Buren, uh, right, uh, oh, maybe about uh, six months after we moved down in 1947, and it was called Shannon Court. Um, Anna Reith and her husband built it from uh, St. Louis. He had TB and came out here and uh, was healed. And uh, he built a motel right on Van Buren, a 26-unit uh, wooden structure. Uh, and uh, we bought it, Dad bought it, and uh, uh, that's where the family worked. Most of the kids worked there. And after school, I would go and help and uh, get things ready. And uh, Mom and Dad would help us, and uh, uh, th that's the way uh, it started, the motel. Now, were there any fads when you were younger? I know we talked about it a little bit ago that you remember? I'm sure there were some, but none of them uh, is fresh in my mind right now. I can't, I think if I dwell on this, it'll come back. <clears throat> and how old were you when you started dating? Oh boy. You know, uh, you know even in high school, uh, you know, we, yes, I had a date for the prom, but it was kind of, you know, who is, who's available and who isn't been taken. It doesn't, you know, so then you, then it becomes formal. Oh, she's still uh, available and uh, she, they were very, uh, uh, well, I, I went to the senior prom. I do, I remember that. And, Would you uh, say that's your, that was your first date? Kind of, yeah. But you see, as a twin sister, it doesn't work out like dates. <laughs> she would bring her friends over and I'd bring my, her girlfriends over and I'd bring my boyfriends over and we all just had got together. It was mm. just a, a, a fun thing, meeting, and uh, we go to the, the, the football games, uh, high school football games, and then uh, meet up at the, the social, uh, at the, uh, the uh, dance hall we used was um, under St. Mary's Basilica. There uh, was a big open space, and that's where we practiced our band. That's where our hall was for the plays. And that's, uh, our socials were there. Um, we, we, had, uh, we had a very good time. We had a great time. Do you remember um, who the rival was, the biggest rival during your high well, school yeah, period? Yeah, Phoenix Union. Oh. That was the biggest one. And there was a, uh, also a Carver High School. Uh, in those days, the schools were segregated. Uh, uh, not, not at the Catholic school, but uh, in the public school, they were segregated. So uh, that's, uh, that's where, those were big rivals. Now after high school, where did your education go from there? Well, the first year I made application to, uh, uh, to several colleges, and Regis College in Denver accepted me, so and I went there for one year. And uh, I, uh, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, then I- uh, Were you on scholarship? Uh, or? No, okay. no, no, I wasn't, I was, uh, um, no, because I worked very hard in uh, high school, I don't think I gave my studies uh, as much attention as it deserved. So in my freshman year in uh, college, I improved uh, quite a bit uh, and uh, made application to Santa Clara and got accepted. And the reason I, was pr I wanted to go to Santa Clara because my brother Joe was a uh, brother, religious brother, Jesuit brother, and he was stationed in Las Gatas which was just outside of Santa Clara. And I had two sisters in uh, San Francisco, Helen and Genevieve. So I thought that would be nice to be close to them. So did you have to take loans out or did you, were you able no, to pay for it? No, my father uh, was able to uh, uh, pay for that. Um, but I should mention, during my second year at uh, uh, Santa Clara, um, I was drafted into the military. So when I came out, I used the GI Bill, and that's what paid for my education, and uh, I got insurance, and I got a car. Now, when you were drafted, so how many years of college did you finish? Were you able to finish um, two years at Santa Clara, and then you were drafted? Or? Yeah, in my, uh, uh, the end of my sophomore year, um, that was, see, I went one year to Santa Clara, and then I was drafted. Then I came back, after two years, came back and finished my junior and senior year at Santa Clara. Now when you were drafted, where did they have you um, go? Well, I, um, 
went to, uh, uh, it was just outside of uh, Carmel. Um, can't think of it. Uh, a lot, it'll come to me. It's a, uh, that was a boot training camp. Mm -hmm. uh, I went there, uh, I believe, 16 weeks. And then from there to uh, San Antonio, Texas for uh, training. Uh, they uh, want, they, uh, I guess they were in need of nurse, uh, field uh, medics, and that's what they trained me. But that's not what I ended up being. I, I went into a company uh, that was a medical company, and the first thing you know, I was in the office doing the, uh, I was the clerk for the office, doing all the typing and uh, the front desk work. And did you get to travel to any other countries while in the military? No, the, the, my company officer would not release me from, the, uh, from my station, and he kept me there. I, I had an opportunity to go to, uh, to uh, Europe, to France, but uh, they wouldn't release me. So then after the military, you went back to Santa Clara? Yes. Finished up high school, and then what? College. I'm sorry, finished up college, and then what? Then uh, after graduation, uh, I came back to Phoenix to work and help uh, Dad in the business. Okay, and then how did you end up meeting Shirley? Well, that happened uh, several years later. Uh, Shirley uh, had an aunt out here, Agnes and Victor. And um, Agnes, uh, uh, Victor was uh, uh, Shirley's mother's brother. and. Uh, they came out for, uh, to uh, see the country, her and her sister, uh, Marilyn. They, um, let's see, they, uh, they came out in the month of, uh, of February, I believe. And uh, uh, they, uh, uh, I think we ought to pause for a second. Mir has two huge things of toys. Oh, Jen's Christina. has a whole closet of toys. We, it, you, we just didn't have it. They weren't, it wasn't available, number one. You gotta live in a condition where everything is restricted. Yeah. I mean, lucky thing though, the soil was so good in certain areas, like Chempasford had great soil for growing vegetables. So you guys and that was a lifesaver. Wow. Because all of that, they could pull it out and then they, they learned how to uh, preserve them. So in the winter, there's mason jars. Yeah. Everybody cooked, put that stuff in. Yeah, it's interesting. All right, so we're, tell me when we're on. Either on. Oh. <laughs> I figured that. <laughs> All right, so going back to uh, how you met mom. Um, uh, now, uh, uh, keep in mind in those uh, days Uncle Johnny was single and I were single and many of the families in the community of the, uh, the Lebanese families would call us to they would have a, a niece a nephew or ever somebody come in town they would call us and and Uncle Johnny and I would um, entertain them and then there was a uh, like a family that uh, had uh, 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 their cousins come in from Australia so uh, Uncle Johnny and I had a pattern that we'd show them the sights, you know, take them to different, uh, uh, show them the, uh, the Japanese garden on baseline, which was beautiful, you know, all the uh, stock flowers growing, the Mormon temple, uh, uh, the citrus farms, uh, you know, the downtown Phoenix, the uh, going over McDowell to show them the lights of Phoenix or South Mountain. So, uh, and Agnes called my mother and said her uh, two um, nieces were coming in town, whether we would uh, just uh, show them around. So uh, no, no big deal. You know, we do this. Mm -hmm. we, we enjoy doing that, especially to our friends. So uh, uh, we went, uh, Uncle John and I went over to Aunt Agnes's and Uncle Victor's house uh, to pick up, uh, 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 to meet um, Evelyn, Marilyn, and uh, Shirley. Now, now keep in mind now, th this is several years ago, and Agnes's kids were all young. And at that age, they are so cute, you know, they want to see who, how these things all fit together, you see. So uh, 
I, uh, we, we uh, had a nice, sat down, had a nice conversation. Uncle Victor showed me the stuff that he was doing around the house and, uh, uh, and Agnes brought us over some, uh, uh, um, you know, some drinks and uh, some food. And then um, we uh, left. And the way mom tells the story, she didn't want to sit in the back seat. So she, she didn't know who was driving. So she sat in the front and Marilyn sat in the back seat. And uh, the, this particular time I was driving, so uh, uh, she sat uh, in the front and, uh, and uh, Marilyn uh, was sat in the back. So we were going to a, uh, I think that particular night the Cedars had a, I, I believe that they had an event that we went to, or that was the next night, and I'm maybe getting both mixed up. So. Uh, we went to uh, a dance that the Cedars had. It was a fundraiser for, um, I think, a Danny Thomas function. And uh, that, uh, after that, uh, uh, there seemed to be some, uh, there was some attraction on uh, my side and on uh, Shirley's side. So we continued to uh, uh, talk to each other on the phone and uh, show them uh, the sites that uh, we normally uh, go through the routine with Uncle Johnny. Then she went away to, she had planned uh, two trips, a trip to Las Vegas while she was out here, her first trip, and then a trip to uh, Hollywood. So uh, the, uh, she went to uh, Las Vegas and uh, uh, wanted to come back to Phoenix. So after her Aunt Agnes and her did the rounds over there, they came back and we continued to seeing each other. Um, and then, uh, then soon after that, they made a trip to California and came back. Uh, also, uh, uh, Mom uh, left uh, to go back to Connecticut and we continued correspondence. For and how long? Oh, for, uh, I think for about a, a year, but at that time, uh, the World's Fair was going on. So I made a trip back east and visited her family. Did you have to drive or? No, no, we, we flew out. They okay. chartered a plane from the city of Phoenix had uh, um, the employees had and had room left in the plane. So I booked uh, into that flight there and went back there to there. So. Uh, that's how, and then the family was very extremely receptive. I met uh, all her brothers and sisters at, at that time. And uh, then uh, I uh, came back, uh, then came back home. And we continued uh, corresponding, and uh, I asked her to come out here to, um, so we'd get to know each other a little better. So she uh, uh, was able to uh, get a job at St. Joe's Hospital, and uh, she had to found a roommate that we knew, that I knew from uh, the Catholic alumni, and, uh, and she got an apartment uh, that was walking distance to St. Joe's. Do you remember when you first met her family? Um, you said they were real receptive, but is there anybody that stuck out? Well, her mother and father were very, very uh, kind people, just uh, uh, very uh, open and very loving, you know, just, they, they were just, beautiful people mm -hmm. and all her brothers and sisters were very receptive yes. you know, they were just yes. great you know and uh, we, we had a great time so you corresponded for a year and then mom moved out to Phoenix right and then um, then I think shortly after that she worked here I'm going to guess maybe six months or something like that mm -hmm. or eight months and then we uh, we became engaged and how did you propose to her? We, uh, let's see now, got to remember now. We went to North Mountain and uh, uh, then I asked her, see I can't remember the exact words, now I asked her, it wasn't a formal proposal, it was kind of a side comment that, <laughs> that just kind of the best I could do. <laughs> uh, so that, uh, <laughs> that was, uh, so mom figured it out. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> then we went from there. We went over to the casa, and uh, uh, um, we we uh, uh, at the front of the Blessed uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe. We prayed there, and then uh, we started our process of engagement. So I remember when we went to North Mountain for a different function recently. Yes. You were saying that you recognized some of the same things. Right. I think you said that there was a flower shop, was it, or a, a no, diner? There, there was a, um, an Italian. After that, we, we stopped over at an Italian. Uh, it isn't there any longer. It moved because uh, they widened the street, 7th Street. Uh, we stopped over for lunch, I think. Over one of that little uh, um, Italian uh, diner, uh, uh, on our way back into Phoenix. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then, where did you guys get married? In Phoenix or Connecticut? No, it was in Connecticut, Shirley's hometown. And was your uh, family she, able to all well, go out there? Yeah, most of them. Although I, uh, some of them couldn't because they they had small kids and uh, their husbands were working. It was very difficult. But uh, Joe came, Johnny came, and um, uh, then um, and, and I need to tell you that uh, when I, when Shirley first came out, my father had just passed away uh, three months prior to that. What had happened? Well, uh, uh, father, my father uh, died from a, a blood clot. He was at St. Joe's Hospital, and um, uh, the um, and the, and. And I'm telling you that because my father was no longer with us. My mother was. So my uh, brother Johnny wanted to take my mother back to Syria to see her, her family who, who's still around and to, to visit there. So they made a trip back there. And then during that span is when uh, I got engaged to uh, mom and then set the wedding date. And at, at the time was so close when mom and Johnny were coming out that they stayed over at the, the Bayard's house, and, uh, and then I worked my way back, drove back east to, to get married, and that was in December. So um, what year did your father pass away? It was in, uh, and I can't remember. It was before but it was before surgery. the wedding? Oh, yes. Yeah. He, father, and what had happened? He had surgery and then... He had surgery and things just didn't uh, go well. They, uh, they didn't, don't have the blood thing, uh, uh, you know, uh, medicine that they have today. Blood and they don't blood thinner. So it, th th there were some complications. Uh, 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 either the, well, uh, you know. What do you remember about that situation? Well, um... I remember the doctor chewing the nurse out. He, we had a uh, nurse all night watching it. Uh, I, I remember seeing him really. The doctor was very good. He uh, he came over to the house that uh, the the, uh, the uh, evening that Dad died. He just that's that's an exception. Mm. Um. So then the wedding ceremony in Connecticut. Oh, that was beautiful. Was mom, that, mom should be telling that I story. Know. I mean, she has more detail than I do. Well, it was morning, right? It was a morning. And it was uh, in yes. December, so it was, well, it was cold and snowing. Cold, but uh, there wasn't a lot of snow. Not at that right at that time. Although after the uh, reception, it started to snow. Uh, I remember driving back there, and uh, there was uh, snow right then, and I lost my. Everything was white from the snow, and I lost my direction, and I couldn't, and I drove nearly all night trying to get there. And uh, finally by morning, I uh, I think I called, and they told me what street to, to get on to find my bearings, and, and I saw them waiting at the porch. So you, you were almost late for the wedding? No, that oh. was for the, <laughs> okay. the, I came a few days before the wedding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. And how long did you guys stay in Connecticut after the uh, wedding ceremony? Well, uh, uh, <clears throat> right after the, uh, we had a beautiful reception, and uh, uh, Father uh, Hatoum, who was a very close friend of the family, and uh, he was the pastor of uh, St. Anne's Malachi Church in uh, Danbury. And he was, uh, I think, just about every Sunday or 
close to it, he'd come and have a meal with the family. So they all got very close to him, and that, and that's beautiful that there was that much uh, warmth between the pastor and the family. And um, he was uh, uh, great at the at the wedding, a very uh, jovial man and a very solid spiritual man too. So after the wedding ceremony, um, how long did you guys stay in Connecticut before the honeymoon, or did you go? Well, right after the wedding that evening, we uh, we left for our honeymoon. And where was the honeymoon? It uh, it was uh, oh boy, we stayed in a, a, a little place just north of Danbury, um, and from there we drove all the way through uh, the upper uh, New York and um, went to, uh, eventually got up to uh, Madonna House. And um, they, uh, we spent uh, our honeymoon basically there. Uh, we spent several days there. They got us a cottage, uh, you know, uh, about a, a mile or so from, from Madonna House. And then uh, that, was, that was beautiful. There was uh, uh, a nice uh, cottage. Just snow and pine trees all all around Beautiful. us. We were in the middle of kind of nowhere with trees yeah. and white white blanket of snow, and then uh, we came down to uh, Catherine de Hewitt was beautiful. She uh, um, gave her her blessings, and cousin Teresa was there too, and uh, we did, we did, it was beautiful. It turned out very very nice, and there was a big storm coming. I remember we were thinking of going to Sudbury from there. But this big storm was on its way in, and they said, there's no way I could go. I have to work my way back mm -hmm. to the United States. So um, we, we did that. And did you go on, was there a cruise involved? That was on our way, that, that was going back to Connecticut. Okay. And then, uh, then from uh, Connecticut, uh, we went to Florida. And I showed Shirley where the military base was and some of the families that I had met in uh, South Carolina, and uh, we uh, we stopped there, and then uh, made uh, then we stopped and uh, right right went right into Florida, and she had an uncle, uh, Fred, who uh, uh, we stayed at his place, and he's the one that encouraged us to take the cruise. He says, you know, you go to the go to Nassau, mm -hmm. so he helped us arrange it and. Uh, we left our luggage there and a car there, and he drove us to the uh, port, and we got on the ship. It was a beautiful ship, Frank C. Mm. an Italian liner. Oh boy, did we both gain weight on that <laughs> ship? Uh, it was very nice. We had a great time. So it took you to the Bahamas or to the NASA. Baham to NASA, and we went to Freeport, mm -hmm. and I think those are the two places, and then came back to uh, Florida. Uh, Florida, and then. Then you went back to Phoenix from Florida. Then, yeah, then we stopped uh, on our way, you know, New Orleans, and she had a, a, a cousin uh, in um, Louisiana. We stopped there, and uh, we stopped at El Paso. I showed her the uh, went to into Mexico from El Paso. So it, we, I think we were gone a whole month. So we, where, um, what you said, North Carolina? What places have you visited? And why? You mean and during our honeymoon? Well, no, before. Oh, um, well, she had, uh, let me think. So why were you in North Carolina before? No, no, was South Carolina. Or South Carolina. I'm, South Carolina because I was in the military there. Okay. And then I had some friends that uh, I had met during, uh, the, um, during my military days that we went to visit. So where else did you go during your military days besides South Carolina? Oh, I, I did, uh, I, yeah, I went to Washington, D.C. I would always go over to the Air Force Base and get on one of their planes wherever they were going. And I went to the West Coast twice and wherever I could go, I would, uh, to make use of my time on yeah. weekends and my time off, I would just uh, jump a ride. So South Carolina. Went to Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Then to, went once, I think, to, uh, I made one trip to Florida, and then uh, two trips to the West Coast. Wow. Um, now, <clears throat> so you got back to Phoenix, and then where was the first house when? Well, you know, I, um, I hadn't made any arrangements where we're gonna stay. And I really wasn't worried because we had some apartments that were available. 
So we took this one apartment, which is uh, was actually, uh, if you remember Adrian's restaurant? Yeah. Well, he didn't occupy the whole thing. Half of it was restaurant, and the other half was an apartment, and that's where we stayed, in that apartment, a one-bedroom apartment. Uh, so we got busy, got it, uh, got furniture in there, and uh, uh, the manager of the El Sereno helped me with get it ready, and uh, we uh, we spent I think the first two or three nights uh, with mother at the house, and then uh, moved the furnishing in and uh, filled up. The, went to the Shirley went to the grocery store, loaded up the refrigerator, and and the. And that's how we started. And it's right off uh, McDowell. Uh, it's McDowell and, and 24th Street. It was 2334 East McDowell. So that was the first the place. Two. Besides staying at your parents' place, yeah. then you moved there. And then where after then that? Then we uh, found an apartment on uh, 7th Avenue and Thomas, no, 7th Street and Thomas, called Country Club Apartments. We moved there. And uh, uh, we spent until. Uh, um, Shirley was uh, pregnant. Uh, she got pregnant there, and then they told us because they don't allow children there, we had a had a leave. Mm. So I think I think we left there after the first child, and then went to an um, apartment on Pinchot, just off of Twenty Fourth Street. Night apartments. We stayed there until we had our second child, then they kicked us out of there, and then we bought a house. And where was the house? On Almeria. It was uh, just uh, off of uh, 24th Street uh, and north of uh, McDowell, one block, Almeria. And that's where, uh, uh, that's where you kids, some of the older kids went to uh, St. Agnes School. Mm -hmm. And then we were uh, very active in St. Agnes Church. And then from there you moved to? Then we, uh, then after uh, we had, uh, gee, we had an Almeria house, we had uh, seven children. And mom was pregnant with Mark. And then, you moved and then we moved to Meadowbrook. 2802. 2802, the first house on Meadowbrook. Mm -hmm. And that's where, uh, uh, we set up, uh, uh, had a lot of bedrooms, so I can't remember, one, one, two, three, four, four bedrooms. Five, I think, five counting bed years. That's right, five bedrooms. So that was, boy, that was a big, big jump yeah. from Almeria, where, where all of us that were uh, in Almeria house, we had uh, one big room with two bunk beds, and the other one had two beds in it. And all I remember, the, the kids, we had a, a bought a, a, a um, cabinet so Mary Ann could uh, secure her clothes and not everybody go through it. So we put a padlock on that, and uh, it, it worked out fine. Everyone survived, even the double bunks, they, they, it, it was good, it was go great. Uh, we, we did uh, very well there. We had a, um, we bought a couple, a swing set, a bar, and uh, uh, got to know the neighbors real good. Uh, so that was a good, a good place to grow up and being close to St. Agnes. Then after that, we moved to uh, the, the North Phoenix, St. Thomas, uh, and that's where they started the school over there. And uh, all of them uh, went to uh, St. Thomas from there. So 2802 was the address, and then from that point? Well, we, we mm -hmm. stayed there for, till, uh, yeah, I can't, I don't know how many years, but at least. I was in uh, fourth grade when we moved we to. Fourth grade. Uh, so we were there maybe about six, six, six or seven years, and then. Uh, Moved over to Next door. Uh, 28, uh, 28. 2808, right? Or no, 20, 28, 28, 28. 28, 28, Meadowbrook. And the reason we moved over there is because the kids were getting older and uh, <coughs> it's nice to have a swimming pool. So we decided that uh, 
instead of putting a swimming pool at the 2802 Meadowbrook, it was cheaper to buy the house next door and uh, the neighbor wanted to sell, so we bought that. And we had the swimming pool and the kids sure used it. And uh, we have a video of uh, introducing you to the new house that, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the... The owners? The owner of that. McGregor. Er no, no, uh, the, the one we bought the house from. McGregor was the house next to us. So the kids, uh, then we had, uh, oh, we had, we had uh, so much room and fruit trees and uh, uh, put a volleyball court out there, a basketball. Uh, gee, it, it was great. Good, good place to grow up. All right. Well, so um, we're coming to the close of this uh, of yeah, this tape. To be continued. And uh, it's to be continued. As you can see, my interviewer kept me very busy, <laughs> and our photographer <laughs> didn't let us, didn't let us miss a step. <laughs> so this is to be continued, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, review this and add some of the things that I'm sure I glanced over uh, lightly that we could bring back to you on the second tape. Um, goodbye for now. <laughs>